So you've always wanted to live on the beach and you want to know the absolute best places Florida has to offer. In this video, we're going to explore exactly that with a little twist. I'm Adam Hancock and I have a real estate group in downtown Sarasota, Florida and over the next few minutes we are going to break down five of my absolute favorite beach towns to live in all of Florida with a tilt focus on quaint. These are all Gulf Coast based and almost a throwback to a different era. Think less cookie cutter, not as developed, but also importantly close proximity to a major city. Don't forget to subscribe and let's get rolling. Let's start off with a bang in no particular order and my current standing location, the always lovely Anna Maria Island. This quaint and rather popular destination spot is a seven mile long barrier island just west of the Bradenton city limits or mainland district, just north of Sarasota County, which splits right about Longboat Key. And from a size perspective is about one mile smaller than Siesta Key. One cool element and a reason that Anna Maria made our list of the best small beach towns is the rather strict regulations, governing both the types of businesses and the types of homes allowed on the island, keeping both the integrity and the old time feel. When visiting or considering this little Florida gem, be sure to check out the following. Explore Bean Point, Rod and Real Pier, peruse the shops right here at Pine Avenue, and also have a proper beach day at Anna Maria Island, Holmes Beach, or Coquina. Okay, number two on our list is some of the best quaint beach towns in all of Florida, Venice Island. An area located 45 miles south of Anna Maria and just below the Sarasota city limits, a town once named top 10 happiest seaside towns in all of America offers a very unique and quaint feel. Okay, so one of the main differences to Venice and the neighboring towns is that it's not divided by barrier islands, so no bridges. So downtown Venice and Venice Beach are within a quarter mile of each other, which is one of only three cities in the entire state that's situated in the same manner. And that gives it a generally more beachy, eclectic, coastal feel overall. So as you might have imagined, Venice's namesake is from its Italian counterpart. And when the town was originally incorporated, a lot of the aesthetic and the homes and the businesses were created in that same vein with Italian inspired architecture, creating a pretty charming aesthetic overall. When visiting or considering this little Florida gem, be sure to check out the following. The Venice Fishing Pier, downtown main shopping district, grab a bite to eat at Sharky's on the Pier or Daiquiri Deck, and be sure to comb for some shark's teeth at the world's shark teeth capital, Casperson Beach. Okay, number three on the list, my favorite little spot when living in St. Petersburg, Florida, Passa Grill Beach. of St. Pete Beach. So what you have is you're slightly above Fort DeSoto Park. You're just to the left of Tierra Verde. And actually, if you draw a line straight in the water down south, you would hit Anna Marie Island, which was number one on our list. This spot is kind of like how I view Lido Key in Sarasota. A little bit more laid back, family friendly, uh, easy-ish kind of in and out, and generally just a slightly more pleasant vibe overall. There are plenty of advantages in this area, including lack of high rises, lower crowds, and about four miles of undeveloped public coastline wrapping around Gulf Bay to the end of the key uh, to meet at Boca Ciega Bay. So overall, definitely a quaint beach town where you can park, walk to the beach, peruse shops, boutiques, ice cream shops, outdoor markets, restaurants, and more. And when visiting or considering this Florida gem, 
make sure you check out the following. Eat breakfast on the beach at Paradise Grill, check out the shops at one of the world's smallest Main Street districts, hop on the Shell Key Shuttle, and check out the 1800 acre Shell Key Preserve, and also make sure you jaunt over 20 minutes to downtown St. Pete and check that district out as well. Okay, number four and another awesome beach spot, definitely one of the best in Florida in my opinion, Indian Rocks. Okay, Indian Rocks is also in Pinellas County, like Pasa Grill, just a little bit further north. So this one is below Bel Air Beach and Clearwater and just west of the mainland of Largo. actually originally got his name from a native medicine man that healed his chief from the waters of a natural sulfur spring. As the early settlers were called, the Indians would walk to the rock encircled spring and they would say the Indians are walking to the rocks. Okay, so from an overall feel and appeal perspective, Indian Rocks Beach is both a short drive to Tampa and St. Petersburg and offers nearly three miles of easily accessible beaches right along the Gulf with almost 27 total beach accesses along Gulf Boulevard. So in my mind, it's like a throwback to a different time, a dune line coast fe featuring vacation condos, cottages, and motels. I recently heard someone describe Indian Rocks like the place that your grandparents took your parents on vacation. I think it perfectly sums it up, the big word being nostalgia. Okay, so when visiting or considering this Florida gem, make sure you check out the following. The Nature Preserve, Cold Park, which was the healing spot, Guppies on the Beach, one of my absolute all-time favorite restaurants, and the Clearwater Aquarium, home of Winter the Dolphin. Okay, for our fifth and final amazing quaint Florida beach town, the always attractive Captiva Island. So Captiva Island is located just to the south near Fort Myers, below Englewood and Minnesota Key, and just parallel to Cape Coral. If you're familiar with this island, you're probably also familiar with its sister to the south, Sanibel Island. This one being slightly more quirky, but both great coastlines nonetheless. So just over a small bridge, which crosses right about Turner Beach, you have one, a great spot for fishing, but two, what's really interesting about these islands is that all amongst them, you can find these colored, pastel colored shells, which is pretty unique. The beach stretches about five miles to the northern tip right at Redfish Pass. And if you take the scenic route, you'll pass a giant cactus, colorful bougainvilleas, and lush landscaping all along the coastline that'll dump you right about downtown Captiva, which is much more of a village than a town. And when considering or living in this Florida gem, make sure you check out the following. Catch a sunset at Blind Beach, uh, take a day trip with Captiva Cruises, go shelling on one of the beautiful beaches, or grab a burger at the Mucky Duck. All right, so that does it for some of the absolute best beach towns Florida has to offer. If you enjoyed it, please hit the subscribe button below. Also be sure to check out some of our other coastal inspired videos here. And finally, if you need anything from me at all, my contact information is below and also in the description box.